in today's video, I am going to go over an introduction to electric potential energy and work for point charges. Now, this introduction video is actually part one of the introduction to electric potential energy. In this video, I'm going to go over the equations that we use and kind of how we use those equations. In part two, I'm going to go over and talk about the importance of knowing the difference between positive and negative electric potential energy. Now, if you want to, you can link to that video right here, right now. That would be part two of the introduction. Then, at the end of this video, I'm going to put some links to some simple problems that we are going to work out so that we can have a full conceptual and mathematical understanding of electric potential energy and work for point charges. Now, before we get into the meat of the video here, let's just remind ourselves we have these terms, electric potential energy, which is measured in joules, and electric potential, which is often referred to as just potential, and potential difference. That, and these two are measured, the potential is measured in joules per coulomb, which we often call the volt. So we want to make sure we keep these different electric potential energy and just kind of plain old potential or potential difference. In this video, we're going to focus mostly on electric potential energy, which is measured in joules. And this is the situation that we have. We have two charges. This charge I'm calling capital Q. It's a positive charge. This I'd like to call capital Q as my main charge. It's going to stay here and it's not going to move. This charge is my little Q charge. Now it's red here. You can see it's also positive. But you can't really see it because it is so far away from this charge, this main charge, that it is infinitely far away. So I'm going to put that down, that the distance between those charges is infinitely far. Now I'll come back later and explain the significance of that. But if we want to calculate the change in potential energy of this two-charge system, we can use this equation. And it says that the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of charge we move and the potential difference through which that charge is moved. So you can see I'm going to leave this charge here and I'm going to move this charge. This is my small q charge and I would move it through a potential, the potential being created by this capital Q charge. Now I want to point out that the change in potential energy is also equal to the amount of work that we do. Because sometimes you'll get a question that might say, how much work is required to move a charge through a potential difference? But you could also get a question that would say, what is the change in potential energy of a charge that is moved through a potential difference? So the work and the potential energy, as you should know from mechanics and things we've talked about earlier, are equal to each other. Okay, now that again, this says the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of charge times the potential through which it is moved. Well, this says delta V, the change in potential. We want to remember that we can also write that as the change in potential energy is equal to Q times the final potential, wherever it ends up, minus the initial potential, wherever it started. Sometimes you'll be given a problem that will say, you want to move a certain charge through a certain potential difference. But you could also get an equation that might say you want to move a certain charge from a point where the potential is 20 volts to a point where the potential is, let's say, 5 volts. What would be the change in potential energy of that system? You have to remember that the change is always the final minus the initial. When we calculate potential energy for charges, we have to use the negative and the positive sign on the charge, which is different than when we calculated the Coulomb force. And therefore, if you're going to use the sign on the charge, you have to make sure you get the sign of the difference in the potential, because sometimes it'll be positive and sometimes it'll be negative. And as we said earlier, the change in potential energy could be positive and it could be negative. Okay. It's also important to remember that the change in potential energy, because it's not a vector, is independent of the path that is taken. 
So it doesn't matter whether we take this charge and we're right along this path to say right here, or we take this charge and we drag it around here and go like that and end up in the same place. It's just the change in the potential. Okay? Now, you could also have a problem where they don't give you the two potentials. They might give you this charge, the amount of charge here, and the distance from this charge to another distance, whether you're moving it away or towards. Now, we can do that. It's not that hard. But we have to know the equation for calculating the potential. Now, the equation for calculating the potential is K, Coulomb's constant, times the amount of charge, and then the distance from that charge, divided by the distance from that charge. So we could substitute this equation in for the final and the initial potential. And with that, we get an equation like this. And you often see it written like this in your textbook. So now you can see it says the change in potential energy is the charge and this is really the final potential, and this is really the potential at the initial location. You can see the difference between these two is just we have an initial distance and a final distance. Okay? So all these equations are really the same, just depending on what information you're given. And like I said, I'll do some problems at the end of this video, which I'll make links to at the end of this video, to show you how we work with each of these three equations. Now I want to come back to the fact that this charge right here is currently infinitely far away. That means that this distance, r is the distance, the initial distance is infinite. It's infinitely big and any number divided by infinity is zero. So this whole term, if the charge is infinitely far away, is zero. Now if that is zero, then it goes away, and we end up with the change in potential energy. If we move the charge into a certain location, that is a certain distance away, and that distance would be RF, that's the final dif distance. If we think about it starting at infinitely far away, then the change in potential energy is simply K, Q, Q, both of the charges divided by the distance between them. Now, it seems a little odd that we would have a change in potential energy, but we only have one distance here, really. But the assumption is that we started that charge infinitely far away. And you'll see that in problems sometimes. It'll say a charge is really far away or a charge is infinitely far away and it's moved to a distance, let's say, half a meter away or 10 centimeters. What's the change in potential energy? Well, the assumption is that when it's infinitely far away, that it has no potential energy. Okay? Or the potential energy, of course, is so small compared to when it's closer that it really doesn't matter. So you'll notice it says here again that it's the change in potential energy. But, and that's true, it is. But we only have one distance, and that's because we have a distance. The initial distance really was just infinite, and that term for the potential is zero. Okay, so you, you can see we have four equations here. They're all equal to each other. They're all really the same equation. It really depends on what you're given. Are you given the actual change in potential? Are you given the initial potential and the final potential? Are you given the main charge and the distance? The change in the distances, the two distances? And, or are you just given that it's a certain distance away? Okay, remember all of these are also equal to the amount of work. So you could get a question that says, what's the amount of work? And you could get a question that says, what's the change in potential energy? Okay, so tune in, watch part two. We'll talk about the difference between negative and positive potential energy. It's so fascinating. It's amazing. And then click on the links and try a few problems and you'll have it all down. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.